All right, Genesis chapter 27. I'm going to read just a little bit tonight, a little bit more than I normally do because it's just a, a good story here. And um, I, I'm, I'm just going to read a lot more than I normally do. Genesis chapter 27 and verse 1. If you found that place, would you say amen? And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son. And said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. And now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. And make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me, and I may, that I may eat that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. Now, Isaac is the father. Rebekah is the mother. Jacob is a son. And Esau is a son. Okay? Those of you that don't know the story that well, Isaac is in the bed, his deathbed, he's dying, and he tells his elder son, Esau, go and kill me a deer, some venison, and uh, when you bring that to me, I'm going to bless you. And his mother, Rebecca, um, Jacob's mother, or Esau's mother, Rebecca, hears what the father, Isaac, is saying, and <clears throat> Again, and Rebekah, the mother, heard Isaac spake, when Isaac spake unto Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. Verse 6, and Rebekah spake unto Jacob, and this is her other son, saying, Behold, I heard that thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat, that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore my son obey my voice. According to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock. And fetch me from thence. Two good kids of the goats. And I will make them savory meat. For thy father. Such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father. That he may eat. And that he may bless thee. Before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah, his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother, is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Verse 12, My father, peradventure, will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver. And I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory meat such as his father loved. And Rebecca took goodly raiment. A, Rebecca took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau which were with her in the house. And put them upon Jacob her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit, and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? How in the world did you kill a deer, cook it, and fix it that quick? And Jacob said unto his father Isaac, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. 
Mm. It ain't bad enough just to be a liar. It sure is bad when you lie on God. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him. And notice what Isaac said. The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy. As his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And again Jacob says, I am. And he said, Bring, he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And Jacob came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, this is Isaac. He says, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which the Lord hath blessed. What a story. You know, you say, well, man, that, that took a long time. We didn't know, need to know all them details. Well, somebody a lot smarter than me and you decided that it was important enough that he ought to put this whole story in the Bible. Amen. All Scripture is given by divine inspiration and is profitable for doctrine and for reproof and for correction and instruction in all righteousness. So, you know, if you don't think that this story is very important, God does. Amen. And uh, I, you know, there's a lot of preaching in here. There's some story. There, there's some principles, and there's some truths in this story that's very applicable to us in our lives every day. One of the one of the big things that kind of jumps out at me tonight, and I'm not planning on preaching at it, but one of the big things that just kind of hits you with a big axe in the head, so to speak, uh, mentally speaking, is you know that mothers and fathers uh, they ought not to favor their children. Amen? God loves your children the same, and you ought to love them the same. Amen? And you know, I know temperaments of children. Sometimes some of them just rub us a little, uh, some of them, uh, you know, just rub us a little different, you know. I mean, sometimes my kids, I mean, sometimes they just, I mean, them little girls, they, they're always kind of generous and, and, and just real easy going for the most part. And that little boy, man, I mean, he'll crank it up, boy. He'll try you. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes I just have to bear down on him with the belt. And uh, it ain't that I don't love him as much as I do the others. It's just, uh, you know, each child, uh, different attributes, different uh, personalities and tendencies. Uh, you know, you have to combat those individually, amen? You know what I'm saying? But you know, you ought to never want to take one of your children and push them down that you can push another one up. You know what I'm saying? But that's exactly what Rebecca did here. Now, I know that you've got to take into the, 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 the equation here the, the providence of God and knowing that Jacob was the one that was going to receive the blessing. I understand that. But then you also got to realize uh, uh, that God knows everything. Amen. Uh, you, you know, uh, sometimes people say, well, why is it that God hardened the heart of Pharaoh? Amen. i tell you why. It wasn't that Pharaoh wanted to be saved. If God in all of his omniscience, uh, that means all of his knowledge, and foreknowledge. I mean, he knows uh, yesterday. He knows what's happening right now. And he knows what you're going to do tomorrow. Amen. That's why he, the scripture speaks of being predestined. God knows whether you're going to go to hell or not. I said right now, Tony, uh, God knows whether you're going to wind up in heaven or hell because God knows everything. 
But he doesn't make you go to either one. Wherever you wind up, it'll be a free choice of your own. But that choice that you're going to make, that choice of whatever one of us, God already knows that. Amen. He knows everything. But here before us is just the, the blatant facts of this story here that Isaac was going to bless his elder son, the oldest son, and his wife, Rebecca, heard about it. She concocted a plan to deceive her husband and to deceive her oldest son because Jacob was her favorite. And so she started pulling strings and she started lying. She even said, let the curse be upon me. She was so bent and bound and determined that she wanted her favorite child to excel and be on the top of the ladder that she was willing to place a curse on her own life. Amen? <laughs> we live in a day and an hour where mamas are willing to lie and cheat and steal and, and, and fight and curse and swear just to uh, get their child on the top uh, just so their child can win the beauty contest, uh, just so their child can win the ball game. And I tell you, God's going to bring all works into the judgment on judgment day. Amen. Well, glory to God. Amen. Don't know where that come from, but it's the truth. Amen. Glory to God. But the thing that I want to focus on and really look at here tonight is the scripture, verse 21, where it says that, or verse 22, where it said, Jacob went near unto his father and he felt him and Jacob said this, or Isaac said this, it is the voice of Jacob, but it is the hands of Esau. The voice of Jacob but the hands of Esau. And I want to consider that tonight, knowing this, that Jacob, he is willing with his mother to deceive his father. You know, I mean, we can kind of throw that down in the practical book there too. You know, children, you deceive your parents. Or God's going to judge you too. Amen? Amen. Come on now. I mean, hey, there's a lot of practical stuff in here that we could draw out. But the thing that I really want to look at is Jacob, him deceiving his father, but his father should have known better. We as Christians, every day the devil is trying to deceive us, Brother Carol. Every day the father of lies is trying to lie to you and I and trying to deceive you and I. And it behooves us to not fall into the trap of the enemy. It behooves us to go out around the pitfall. Notice David said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Why? Why do we need a lamp for our feet, a light unto our path? Because there's snares, there's traps, there's pitfalls, there's wrong turns in this life. And just as Isaac was deceived, Brother Joe, you and I can be deceived. And I just simply came in this place tonight to tell you and I, we better listen to the voice of God. And we better not trust in the fleshly hands of man. We better not listen. Lean on our own understanding. We better not fill out that situation with carnal fleshly hands. But we better hear the voice of God. We better know his voice and heed to the voice of the almighty God. Amen. Jacob's hands are Esau's hands, but Jacob's voice. Amen. How many of you know that God is still speaking to the hearts of men and women? Amen. Uh, the scripture says that uh, God in sundry times and in diverse uh, uh, methods he spoke to the men of old by the prophets. Uh, but he said in these last days uh, he has spoken unto us uh, by Jesus Christ. Amen. And I'm telling you right now God's still speaking uh, to whoever uh, cleaned the wax out of their ears. Uh, God's still speaking uh, wherever there's a Moses that'll turn aside uh, and look at the burning bush. God's still speaking uh, to wherever men 
men will humble their hearts uh, and get all the crud of this world out. Uh, God's still speaking. Uh, I tell you, he even speaks to us off of the pages of this book. Uh, and he'll tell you how to live and walk and talk. Uh, he'll tell you how that you can enter into that promised land when life leaves your body and that old heart stops beating. Uh, if you listen to the voice of God, he'll lead you beside the still waters. Uh, he'll restore your soul. But don't you ever trust in your hands. Don't you ever trust in your intellect. Man will lead you wrong. Your mind will lead you wrong. Even your heart will lead you wrong. The heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? You don't even know your heart. I don't know my heart. <laughs> But I tell you what I do know. I know the voice of God. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Oh, yeah. Um, you know what this book here is? It's not just a book. Uh, this is the written voice of God. Jesus has spoken unto us uh, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus is still speaking to us. Uh, and I say, hey, devil, uh, you know, I ain't worried about you deceiving me as long as I hear the voice of God and I I obey his voice. Amen. The problem we've got today is people don't want to hear God. They want to second guess God. It don't matter. I hear people say, I've even heard people in the church say, I don't care what the Bible says. I have heard church, I'm not talking about some fruit loop, some atheist out there. I'm talking about so-called holiness folks in the church make the, 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 the statement of stupidity, if you will. They simply say, I don't care what the Bible says. Man. You know, that's kind of what Jacob did, or Isaac did. Jacob came to him. He had those goat skins all over his arms. His mama had helped him tie them things on there. <laughs> they killed the goat, and uh, she whipped that thing up and called goat uh, venison. I mean, man, we was out there in, in, in Bible college, man. We went over to a friend's house, man. They said, come on, eat some of this chili and beans or uh, uh, whatever they call that, chili soup or whatever, bean soup. Man, my wife got in there and got to mowing down on that stuff. Me and, Jennifer, me and Jennifer's really mowing down on it. I mean, we went back for seconds, and we was eating that thing. And after a while, man, uh, that man was feeding us. He said, how you like that sheep? Man, my wife, she was trying to figure out how to get that stuff back out of her, how to throw it up, man. I mean, she looked like she's turning shades. I thought it's pretty good. First time I'd ever eat sheep, I went back and got some more baba sheep or whatever you call it. Hey, man, I thought it's pretty good. But I mean, hey, it's all right if you don't know what you're eating as far as deer meat. And uh, man, the first time I ever slipped it on my wife, she said, I won't ever eat deer. And we slipped it on her. And now she eats it pretty regular. That kind of stuff don't matter. But what you eat spiritually, you better beware of that. You better beware of what you eat spiritually. Because it can damn your soul to hell. Amen. Everybody thinks they're right. But this word right here, the voice of God. You better heed that voice. Jacob comes to him. I mean, he's, oh yeah, he's got, I mean, Vincent in the pot or, or, or goat in the pot. <laughs> that don't even sound good, does it? Goat in the pot. And uh, <laughs> I mean, he comes in there and here, Dad, uh, I mean, I done got this Vincent. His dad said, man, you sure got back from hunting mighty quick. Uh, and uh, man, Jacob's so bent on getting that blessing. His mama standing behind the curtain saying, yeah, come on, man. I mean, Isaac laying in the bed about blind, can't see nothing, man. His ears are, are a little bit dull of hearing. I mean, his senses is on the downside. And then here's Jacob standing before him saying, Yeah, Dad, I got the deer. And Isaac said, How you get him so quick? And Jacob said, The Lord blessed me and, and God gave him to me. Amen. 
I said Jacob not only told his dad, yeah, I'm Esau, not only to just lie, but he lied on God. You know, we living in a day when people's not just satisfied with lying. They, I mean, they try to throw some weight into the equation. I mean, they try to really get it to carry some weight, and they throw God in there. Everything they want to do, they say, God told me to do it. A preacher from right there around Barano said, um, the church came open down there, and he said he had nine preachers to call him at one time. Now, within just a couple of days, nine preachers called him and said, God spoke to me and told me that that's where I need to be pastoring at. Now, somebody's lying, and it ain't God. You know, we ought to be real careful. I've tried to be real careful over the years, Brother Clyde. Man, I tell you, I laid in these floors here and wrestled with God to go to Bible college. Man, I'm telling you, God put me through the ringer and the washer, man. He turned me inside out. I fasted, man. I'd take, I took weeks, man, take my lunch and um, I'd get in these, all, man, I, I was at a crossroads, man. But I, even through all of that, I was real careful about saying God told me to do so and so. Because I think that's a dangerous thing to just throw God around nonchalantly. We got church folks, every time they want to do something, they want a little weight behind what God told me to do it. God told me, you better make sure God told you to do something before you throw God's name around. Because if God told you to do it, it'll prosper. Glory to God. Well, praise the Lord. I told you this might be kind of different here tonight. Amen. <laughs> Jacob standing there, man, mama tied all. I mean, they had the goat in the pot and had the hair on, the, on his arms. I mean, he was. Had the hair wrapped all around his neck because old Esau, he was old. He's old hairy dude, man. Old wiry hair, man. That old goat skin. Dad's laying there blind, don't know any different. And his daughter talking to him off the bed and says, you sure? I mean, are, are you Esau? He said, Jacob says, yeah, I'm Esau. And, and Isaac said, well, it's mighty funny because your voice voice sounds like Isaac or your voice sounds like Jacob not Esau he said so come over here and uh, Jacob goes over there and when he gets over there close to him his father rubs his arm he don't know that he's rubbing that goat hide but that's what he's doing. He's rubbing that goat hide. And he said, yeah, that feels pretty hairy. I mean, uh, uh, Jacob, he's smooth, man. He's got, that, he's got that lotion skin. I mean, he's smooth. And, and I feel all... And, uh, and, and Isaac said, surely this must be Esau. But I tell you this, uh, Isaac was the first charismatic that we ever see in the Word of God because uh, he knew what he heard with his ears, uh, but yet he wanted wanted a second opinion. He wanted to put his hands on it. He, he wanted to second guess God. But let me tell you, if God spoke it to you, if God's voice spoke, don't you take a second opinion on God. Don't you use your hands. You trust in the Lord and believe what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Jacob's voice, but Esau's hands. And there's a lot of folks that have heard the voice of God. They know what that book says, but they'd rather get a second opinion. I'm telling you, however you want to live, there's a preacher in town here that'll pat you on the back. How, whatever your doctrine is, there's somebody that'll say, yeah, that's all right. You go ahead and do it. But I'm telling you right now, there's only one voice of God. There's only one holy Bible. There's only one straight and narrow way. There's there's only one gate into the city. And I'm telling you, we better hear the voice of God and not all these other winds of doctrines. Hallelujah. Better go with what God says. The voice of Jacob, but the hands are of Esau. Notice Jacob was the first one. And when I say charismatic, I simply mean Isaac was the first one 
who went by what he felt and not what he heard. You know, you can get the music. You can get the music pumped up. You can get that old bass guitar going. You can get that drum going, man. I mean, you can get that thing to going, man. You know what I'm saying? Where you almost feel good about anything you do. You know what I'm saying? Man, you get in, the, in, the, in, in downtown, man. I mean, you get in the groove, man, and you, you, you start spending money you don't have or buying stuff you don't need. I mean, just, uh, I mean the music kind of gets you in the groove. You know what I'm saying? That's why they play that music. They want you to spend that money, glory to God. But so it is with church, man. I mean... <laughs> I mean, no. Oh, I, I mean, I'm glad he came and, and don't have no problem, and, and he's still a good friend of mine. We we kind of befriended the old boy out there at the IHOP. He was he was waiting the tables, and I, his name just kind of uh, fled from me there. Keith, Keith, he, he come here one night, man. I mean, Keith don't know nothing about the Lord. I mean, he don't know nothing uh, or didn't know nothing. I've talked with him a little bit about the Lord, about being saved and everything. But as far as the doctrine uh, and, and the and the and the plan of Christ and all, he's very limited. He just don't know a whole lot. But man, he come into church and. They had the music going, man. Old Keith, he got into that thing, waited out in the aisle, man. I mean, he was just in the groove. You know what I'm saying? He's in the groove. Well, you know, there are a lot of folks like that. I mean, they don't really know what they believe. They don't understand. Oh, man, they don't listen to the voice of God. They just rubbing that old goat skin, and it feels pretty good. That must be Esau. But let me tell you, don't be deceived. You better hear the voice of God. You better pick up the book and read it, and let the voice of God leads you beside the still waters hallelujah I said Isaac knew that that voice was Jacob's voice he did not question it brother Tyrone he said with an assurance with an affirmation it is the voice of I or the voice of Jacob without a doubt but after that he knew it was the voice of Jacob, he second-guessed himself, Brother Carol, and he said, come here. I want a second opinion. And that hand of flesh, that hand of flesh, it cast doubt upon what he was hearing in his ears. And that's why it's so important when you read that book there and God takes that road map there and points you in the right direction. You better be careful who you listen to because there's some folks that'll say, oh, that don't matter. Just throw that away. But I'm telling you right now, holiness is right. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I'm telling you, straight is the way and narrow is the gate that leads to life everlasting and there'd be a few that would find that way. Church, I, look here, I hope everybody goes to heaven. I hope they go by the train loads, the bus loads. I don't have an ax to grind. I don't want to cast nobody into hell, and I can't. That'll be left to God. But I know what I heard the voice say, and the voice said this, not everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, is gonna enter into the kingdom of God, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, you better stick with the voice. Voice. Don't you worry about the ghost skin. You better just go with the voice of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. This thing ain't about whether Stacy's right or wrong. This thing ain't about where Clyde Chan's right or wrong or Tyrone Mitchum. This thing ain't about whether the Methodist or the Baptist or the Presbyterian. I'll tell you what this thing's about. You're going to know whether it's right or wrong. When that trumpet sounds, you're going to be raptured or you're going to be left behind and I want to make sure I want to know that I know that I got a ticket to leave out of here hallelujah there ain't going to be no games then brother Jimmy we're going to know who's right and wrong then I don't want to trust in what I think I don't want to trust in what I, my commentary. I'd rather listen to the voice of God. For he said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. He didn't say my sheep know my appearance. Uh-uh. 
He didn't say my sheep know this or that. He just said simply this, my sheep, they know my voice. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Won't you rub that old goat hair? on Jacob's arm and be deceived you better listen you better let that spiritual voice come into your ear you better hear that good shepherd uh, uh, trust not trust in the Lord with all thine heart lean not into thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him uh, and he shall direct thy paths uh, let me tell you there's a lot of people they made the error they second guess God they throw the Bible in the corner and they went with some lying double marriage preacher somewhere but I'm telling you this you better trust you better hear the voice of God and keep his commandments for they are yea and amen hallelujah it's amazing to me the people I tell you what sister Marilee in the church we grew up in man my Sunday school teachers they'd come down the gun barrel on me and tell me man Look here, don't you get double married, don't you? I mean, look here, it's wrong. And now they sitting in churches up under pastors that's got three and four wives. Somebody rubbed the goat hair. Somebody heard the voice of God and then said, hey, I need a second opinion here. Come over here and let me. And they rubbed the goat here. And Isaac was deceived. He was deceived even though the voice was clear in his ear. Don't you trust in your hands. Don't you trust what nobody else tells you. You better hear what thus saith the word of God. The voice of God still speaking in these last days. Oh, God. I tell you what, Brother Carol. I, I know a lot of people, they, they like to just, I mean, they just, I mean, they get their clicks going and this is my man and you know this. But I'm telling you, man, I got one aim. I, I, I'm not trying to run with this click. I'm not trying to impress that one, Brother Clyde. I'm not trying to be in the holiness messenger. I'm not trying to tell you what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to live my life so when that trumpet sounds, I don't want to stay here. <laughs> I said, I don't want to stay here. I want to leave out of here sister Bonnie if I miss the rapture my God what am I going to do I, I, I want gravitation to leave and break hold of my feet brother Carol wherever I'm at if I'm in the bed the Bible said two will be in the bed one will be taken and one will be left two will be at the mill grinding one will be taken one will be left I don't care where I'm at I just want to make sure I know where I'm going I want to leave here when the trump of God sounds Hallelujah. Praise God. I want somebody to come to the music. I'm, I'm through here. Glory to God. My sheep know my voice. A stranger. They'll not follow. You know, it's a good thing to reason things out in life. That's a good thing to have your head screwed on right. To reason things out. You know what I'm saying? But you can't reason the things of God out. I mean, there's some things you can reason about. Hey, do I want to go to heaven or hell? But I'm talking about the spiritual things of God. They're not discerned by the carnal mind of man. You just got to trust in the voice of God. Notice, the Bible said, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. God's ways are much higher than our ways. His thoughts are much higher than our thoughts. And that's why the, the basic principle that God has given to you and I, to listen to the voice of God. Let Him lead. David said, he leadeth me beside the still waters. You haven't got to figure out your path in life. Let God lead you. 
Whatever happened to people following Jesus? If he did it, you ought to do it. If the Bible said it was his custom that he entered the temple on the Sabbath day, he came to church once a week, then you ought to do the same thing. If you read that Jesus prayed in the evening to his heavenly Father, you ought to do the same thing. If Jesus read the book, you ought to read the book. If Jesus grew in the grace and the knowledge and the wisdom of his Father, we ought to grow in the grace and the knowledge. And the wisdom of our Father. That's when we hear the voice of God. Brother Tyrone, when we hear the voice of God, we ask, Lord, what would you have me to do? Where would you have me to go? What do you want to make out of my life? That's when we're listening to the voice of God. But when we start rubbing that goat skin, we start asking questions. Do I have to do that? Do I have to do this? What's the least thing I can do and get by? How can I barely make it into heaven? That, that, that's, that's the questions that a carnal person starts asking. Where our grandfathers, and our grandmothers that was listening to the voice of God, they would say, Lord, whatever you'd have me to do, I'll do it. And I tell you what they do. They laid down Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola. They quit drinking coffee. They quit going here. They quit going there. And our generation calls them stupid. Our generation said that was nonsense. But you've got to understand why they did it. It's because they loved God. And now this generation says, what's the cheapest route that I can go? Where's the path that I can walk down and still enter heaven and do the least amount that I can do? That's when we start rubbing that goat skin. We don't hear the voice of God. You say, what's the voice of God? Jesus said, you got to love me more than father and mother, brother and sister houses and land even your own self you can't even love your life you got to be willing to die <laughs> glory to god that's the boy that's why men now sister rachel that's why men have been tied to stakes and they'd say deny jesus and they'd say i'll not do it 80 and six years i've known him and he's done me no harm and they'd light the fire and burn him at the stake that was men and women that were listening to the voice of god that said take this flesh destroy my body but i know in whom i have believed i've heard his voice and i'm going with the good shepherd hallelujah praise the most important thing a Christian can do is learn the voice of God. You know, Moses heard God speak to him to speak to the rock. But Moses was mad. You know, a lot of times we do stupid stuff when we get mad. <laughs> Me too. God spoke to Moses and said, Moses, you speak to the rock. And because he was aggravated, he picked up that rod and he smote the rock. He made the decision by his feelings. And he didn't listen to the voice of God. I said, Moses made his decision by the way he felt, not by what God told him to do. You understand? Isaac heard it was Jacob's voice. Isaac leaned in the bed and said, I know, I hear it's Jacob's voice. But come here, let me second guess that. And he said, No, wait a minute. That's Esau's arms. Maybe it is Esau. The Apostle Paul said if 
even if an angel preaches any other gospel than this gospel we have preached to you, let them be accursed. It don't matter what you feel with your hands. You know, there's a lot of people bouncing around churches. And they, uh, like I said a while ago, man, you get the music going just as long as they feel good, man. I mean, that's all. I mean, I mean, oh, oh man, Gaither can come to town. They go in there and cry a few crocodile tears, and they, they feel good. I mean, emotion just kind of run over, and, and they go home with the idea, I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. Emotions. Rubbing the old goat hair. I mean, when Elvis Presley would sing, they'd cry and squall. They'd waller down in the floor, tears crying. Just because you cry tears don't mean you're saved. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. This thing's not about emotions. It's about hearing the voice of God. And obeying. Elijah was in the cave because he felt defeated. He's going by what he felt like. He called down fire on Carmel. I mean, had a great revival. Then all of a sudden Jezebel said, I'm going to cut your head. I'm going to kill you. You're a dead man. You know, Elijah thought that after all that great fire coming down, Sister Shirley on that mountain, and that great miraculous thing, he thought that Jezebel would have been converted. But you know, there's some people... They weren't converted at the fire of Elijah. They weren't converted at the ministry of Jesus. They some people, their hearts just as hard as a rock, and they go into hell. You shouldn't let the fact that people won't heed the gospel of Jesus Christ, let that drive you in a cave. They some people just not going to obey God. But God's prepared a place for them also. But Elijah went into that cave not because God sent him. He went into that cave because of what he felt. He went into that cave because God had spoken to him, but he, he was rubbing the old goat hair. Saying, I know I need to be doing something for God, but I, I just don't feel like it. And he backed up in the cave. And all of a sudden, a wind, a fire, earthquake. Woo! I said, God shook me. And then there came a still small voice. What are you doing here, Elijah? I've got kings for you to anoint. I've got prophets for you to anoint. What are you doing here, Elijah? I wonder if God could have spoke to Isaac in that bed and said, Isaac, what are you doing? Rubbing that goat here. You heard the voice. You know the voice. We need to learn the voice of God and hear Him and obey Him. <laughs> Brother L.D. Savage said it. He's in the house that day. Man, I'm telling you, I, I love to read that story or hear that story. He said he's in the house. They didn't have no food, man, all them children. He said God spoke to him. I said, he said, God spoke to me and said, tell your wife to set the table. In that old board house, old sharecropper house, wood floored wood walls said those children were saying daddy we're hungry what are we going to eat and he said God spoke to him and said tell your wife to fix the table he said honey set the plates out she said baby we don't have nothing to eat he said God spoke to me and said prepare the table and said brother Jimmy when she set a plate said he called those children to the table and said they were sitting there what in the world's going on here and said he pulled that chair back knelt down on that old wooden floor and brother savage said my daddy began to pray he said it wasn't good bread good meat good god let's eat it wasn't god is great god is good let us thank him for this food no but he said those big rough hands, tears on that face with furrows in the cheek from years of hard labor. He said he saw them tears running and that man said, God, I did what you told me to do. And he said while his daddy was knelt down on that wooden floor, he said he heard pap, 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 
it on the side of that building and said his daddy got up and a whole covey of quail that flew into the side of the house and was flopping around in the yard. I'm telling you it'll pay off in the long run to hear what God says to us. I tell you, this crazy backslid generation, they'll tell you, you ain't got to live holy. You ain't got to pray. You ain't got to go to church. You ain't got to consecrate yourself. But you better hear the voice of God. Don't you rub that old hairy arm. Don't you rub that old goat skin. You better hear the voice of God and submit yourself unto God. Commit yourself unto God as a living sacrifice. You better hear God because if you're going to make it to God's heaven, you're going to have to be sold out had to be sold out glory to God Sister Barnett I want to hear the voice of God I want us to gather in this altar tonight I don't want us to get in no rush I want us to pray and say God speak to my I don't want to be deceived. I don't want to think it's Esau and it be Jacob. I don't want to, I don't want to think I'm ready to go to God's heaven and I'm really not, Lord. I want you to speak. Esau's hands, but Jacob's voice. You want to hear the voice of God tonight? Let's come into this altar, everyone that would. Hallelujah. God, speak to us tonight, Lord. God, I pray that we would hear that still, small voice that Elijah heard. I pray, Lord, that we would hear the voice of God. God, don't let me trust in myself. God, don't let me trust in my own ingenuity. But God, give me an ear that's tuned to the voice of God. God, my soul, Lord, my eternal destination depends on it, God. My sheep know my voice and a stranger. They'll not follow. Oh, Lamb of God. God, help us not to be deceived, Lord. God, help us to not be deceived, Lord. But oh, God, let us humble ourselves, our hearts, and submit ourselves unto God.